Hello everyone, and welcome to this Akron version 1.3 patch overview video. So there's a lot of changes in this patch, as you can probably assume from the large version number change. The biggest one is that the primary bug causing replay corruption has been resolved. So for the most part, replay corruption seems to be fixed. There needs to be more testing to be absolutely sure how fixed it is. However, a nice side effect is that it means jumping along the timeline is now perfectly reliable, or at least we have found no case in which it isn't. You don't have this old problem of units appearing where they were when you jumped from. Now units will always appear the way they are and the way they should be wherever you are on the timeline as you jump around. Another major change is that there was a bug early on that caused pre-sequence to basically flood the client with data, which was causing a lot of crashes on people loading games or disconnects and other issues. That has also been resolved, though difficult to demonstrate. And one big thing related to jumping around the timeline is, as you can see, the CP effect, while I'm actually basically at the edge of the timeline now, you can see it's fairly strong. At any point in the playable past, it's not that strong. Even at the edge of the unplayable past, the edges are faded out, but the center is still perfectly visible. So the CP effect has basically been massively weakened in order to make it a lot easier to jump around in the timeline and see what's going on at any given point in time. Another major change for skin code, primarily, is that variables can now be synchronized across the network, which means that this lobby settings menu can be shown to all the clients. Anyone who joins into a game will see those lobby settings. As well, the ability to toggle AI on or off for a game per game has been added. This is a feature long coming and it's very nice to actually have it finally. So yes, you can toggle whatever AI you want on and depending on the map, some maps will automatically have certain AI set, which you won't be able to toggle. This is happening before, but it wasn't as obvious. So now this has become completely transparent which should make it a lot easier to figure out what's going on in any game that's being started multiplayer. Graphic settings have also been changed quite a bit in the menu. There's much more detailed options for what graphic settings you want, as well as tooltips for all the settings in case you're wondering what they do, if it's not obvious. And as you can see, addition of a Bloom setting, Bloom has always been in the game, but a setting for it, and depth of field, which I will demonstrate later. So on balance front, there's been quite a few changes to some of the basic economy balance. One of the big changes is that resource processors are now 80 LC instead of 50 LC to build. As well, Grecum as a result only starts with one instead of two, since they're also more powerful individually. They have much higher harvesting rate than they used to, about one and a half times faster than it used to be. And Octomore time has also been increased to eight seconds as part of the economy change and the cost of importers has been decreased to 50 liquid crystal, however importers now have less health and capacity, they have 300 health and 3 capacity instead of 450 health and 10 capacity, since before it seemed like reserves basically weren't any resource at all. They, they were there, you built a couple early game, and then by the time you got to the point where you're building a lot of units, you had 20 reserves in the bank and no need to worry about it. So this change will help make reserves just that much more precious, that much more valuable. A display for in-progress advancements has also been added. It used to be that only complete advancements would be shown up here, but now it also shows ones that are in progress. So if you jump around the timeline, you can very quickly see where you are researching something and what you are researching, especially for gate tech, since that has a tendency to be very easily undermined, so it'll be a lot easier to avoid stopping yourself from getting gate tech, or knowing if the gate tech that you really wanted to have researched is still being researched. In addition to the importer health change, the Armory, Factory, and Macrofab have also had their health reduced a fair amount. The Armory went down from 900 to 800, the Factory from 1000 to 700, and the Macrofab from 1200 to 1000. The Reef has also had its health reduced from 900 to 800. Another balance change for CISO is that cloaking has been moved from the ATHC to the Blackbird. So the Blackbird is now the cloaking unit, which kind of makes sense given it's a stealth bomber. So it is a cloaking healer, which is good to keep in mind because it means that if it's cloaked, it's going to be less capable of healing since energy is used for both healing and cloaking. But if it's uncloaked, of course, it's uncloaked. Well, ATHCs have now become detectors on top of Tornads and Sops. 
that is special ops. So CISO now has fairly effective early detector, but they do not have the ATHC as a cloaking unit, which was a major balance wrench before, and has actually played out pretty well so far. So for the level editor, there were also quite a few changes. One obvious one is that the main community chat is now available in the level editor, as well as it was in game and in the menus. And you can now add a height to fog, so not only is there an intensity, but also a height value. This allows for fog banks to make the level look like it's in the clouds, or just for whatever fog effects you may want that are in height, although this is a good demonstration of its use. Control flags can be edited as well as global flags and constraints. This is new to the editor, but has always been in the script. So the control flags are allowing players to be visible through fog of war, setting the player so they can't be controlled by a human, setting the player to be an AI and forcing it to be an AI. This is what I mentioned before in the lobby about how some player slots can be forced to be AI. And the other three are open for scripting. So they do have meanings in the standard observer monitor. They are open for scripting, so that they are not defined in the editor. Also, as you can see, there are quite a few changes to vector units. The infantry now are set up to hold their guns in different ways while idle and also while in combat. And the Shin Turcher and Teth Pulsar have had their models considerably changed, both to help with differentiation and to make them look a bit more like the other units of their type. So now the Teth units all sort of have this profile going forward, sort of triangle profile going forward. All the Shin units have sort of a hawk-like look that also looks kind of like a bracket. And the Zion units, they always kind of had a similar look. The weapons have also been unified between them, so now the Zion units all have the same sort of missile launcher. The Teth units all have sort of the same plasma cannon weapon, or beam cannon weapon. And the Shin units actually never really had much visible weaponry to begin with, so no big deal there. As well, in general, specular highlights have been increased. The brightness, potential brightness of specularity has been increased by a factor of five, with all the specular maps of units and terrain being adjusted as needed to deal with this, to make it look like it's properly shiny. And the biggest change, as I mentioned before, in the settings is depth of field. So when zooming in close on a unit, it will make everything around it look blurry. So it's in the foreground and everything else is in the background. This is this shouldn't be a change that will affect play much, though it is something you can change in the menu. You can just change it in real time. If you don't like it, you can just turn it off, you can turn it on. The only difference between high quality and normal is that in high quality mode, the edges are properly handled of the in-focus units. And this also, of course, applies to terrain. Just if something's close to the camera, it is in the foreground, everything's in the background. There's also in addition a bouquet respecting bloom effect. As you can see around the Faro's legs here, this is a standard effect that cameras will do, where light is blending in through, and you can see the shape of the aperture in the brightness, in the highlights. Though given that everything isn't that out of focus, the effect is fairly subtle, but it is there. Another big change you may notice is the addition of new build effects. You may have seen these throughout the video, and this is a huge change in terms of how buildings look and how the aesthetics of the game work. Now it looks like actual buildings being built and not just like something small growing in an odd way. These are in for every building and every unit. They all have, they mostly use the one that you see right now where it's growing from the top, kind of teleporting in at the top. However, Grekham, the birth effect has also been modified slightly. It's basically, if you've ever seen young insects, young spiders and such, it's meant to imitate that. So as you can see, growing in, coming sort of semi-transparent beige, and as they grow up, it ends up becoming a color. Another change effect, however, for construction, Grekham still uses the same effect that the others use, as you can see, going from the top and teleporting in. So every unit and building has a new effect, has build effects, proper build effects. So in addition to these new build effects, you can also set the build effects for the birth, construction, or changing into another unit actions. This can be set in the OCS, the Object Class Set file, and can be set per unit, except per action that involves either being built or being born or changing to another unit. But everything has defaults right now. 
However, if you wanted to say add a custom animation, there is an option for having no effects whatsoever, so the unit simply changes or comes into existence, but it may play whatever animation you have going. So for custom animations, I recommend just not having any effects, but for if there's no animations, having the effects is there as a way of just making a nicer transition from non-existence to existence, as you can see right now. So I hope you enjoyed watching that, I hope that's intriguing to you if you've been playing Akron or if you're curious about what was going on and any changes that have happened, any updates, and see you in game!